Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand... Upper Left? Yeah, Upper Left Hand Corner. That felt weird to say for some reason. We have Striker starting as the blue Zerg bottom right hand corner. We have Nyokan starting as the green Terran. This is going to be the Dark Origin lower bracket opening round. This is best of one to see who advances. I've got this game, one more, and then the rest you guys will have to... Actually, if someone could do me a favor, I've got all the games that are on the list. I don't know how to order it in a particular way, but if someone wants to make a list of all the Starcon games in order that are available after this and uh, post it someplace, I think that might be greatly appreciated by the community. I don't quite have the resources to do the menial. It's like, ah, oh, I just casted all these and I want to go searching through all the videos and figure out all the things. Um, if you look, I'll see if I can find the challenge bracket related to it, or maybe I'll bring it up on screen after this if people remember. Because <clears throat> uh, off the replays isn't the exact, it's not the easiest way to do it. You really need to look at the challenge bracket to get them. Anyway, regardless, this is going to be an epic match. Nyokin is pretty strong versus Zerg, and you have Striker who's just brutally strong. Uh, I think these days most people put Hawk above him slightly, but I think that's a contentious first for Hawk. It's pretty close between Hawk and Striker. I think between the two, Striker ends up being the more aggressive player, and Hawk ends up being more of the aggressive macro player. Actually, kind of, it's fun watching Hawk play oftentimes because he will do things that are off meta quite a bit. And I'm wondering if he's doing like the next stage meta stuff, or at least I haven't seen a lot of people punish him for a lot of the antics he's tried to pull. In the meantime, Nyokin. He's got that barracks interior to his main. Let's see if he's getting that SCV scout here. The other thing is I love this map. Neo Dark Origin, I think, just is fun because you have that three base play that can, that, the three early bases that, okay, yeah, you can get your quick three. And you have these uh, ramps that can be very, very abusive. But once you're past that three base, it's like, okay, what do you do from there? I should also mention Crossy out there as one of the top Zerg out here. I feel like when Crossy's actually in practice, when he's in top form, he's number one. And then it kind of shifts between the other. Uh, it kind of does a round robin thing. In the meantime, I'm not sure what shape Crossy is right this second. We'll have to see in upcoming BSL games. Actually, I haven't caught this last weekend's BSL. I should check it out. By the way, I'm also... For people won't... Uh, for people that are on stream, I'm casting this Sunday. For people that are watching this on YouTube, I've probably already casted uh, Group D, which it looks like a pretty fun group. It's like South America versus uh, Lone Dragon in North America. I have ranted about everything but this game. Looks like we've got a lair being mutated. Nyokin did, in fact, go for the first Marine into expansion. He's going to play from there. He's also tacked on additional gas. Let's see if he plays two racks play. I expect him to play two racks play. This is a very difficult map for him, I think, versus Striker in particular, because the Mutalisk play over the ramp... First of all, Striker's Mutalisk Micro is fantastic, but the Mutalisk play over these ramps is just abusive, and you also have this back area where you can retreat the Mutalisk somewhat easily, and you can see where you've got the standard cliffside stuff where you can do Mutalisk abuse, but really, I feel like it's these cliffs, these cliff edges where Zerglings can go in and create a lot of problems. Um, where, and you can, if you have Mutalisks out in the field and you have a Marine Medic Ball, it's very difficult to engage. Uh, at the same time, if you can get a Marine Ball stacked here in the mid game, there's nothing that's going to be able to, on the ground, that's going to be able to push its way through. But once you start getting to Dark Swarm towards the later stages, same problem back the other direction. There's wild swings, I feel like, and I feel like what Dark Origin does is it actually exacerbates a lot of the mechanics that are already present in the game, and Nyokin, look at this, gonna hide a factory interior to his base. I like this play, actually, because the transition to mech, I think, helps negate it really. If you think about the weaknesses of Goliath in the mech play, one of the weaknesses is the fact that they can just get swarms or have to deal with two targets simultaneously and the AI bugs out. But with the ramps on this map, or with the bridges, Goliath making the way across, across, particularly with like a plus one weapons upgrade, could be very, very helpful. We'll see if actually, never mind, I was about to say, well, let's see if it turns into that or if it turns into a quick Valkyrie build. And it looks like it actually, this might turn into a fast Valkyrie build instead. So a delayed pseudo 111, we do have the Academy still being built, but I think Nyokin recognizing the Mutalisk threat. So instead, 
saying, okay, you know what I'm going to do to deal with these mutalisks? I'm going to get some heavy anti-air so that you can't just run me over with that. Although I take it back, he's got, so, never mind. He's just building the armory to, to get the Valkyries up in the air, but got a good group of Marines out on the front in the meantime. Top right being grabbed by Stryker. We'll see how this plays out over the long haul. Supply Depot being built to the back corner just to see if some Zerglings were or something else were trying to take out that rear sector. Striker also gathering up. I think he was, he's got to sniff something as well, because more often than not, if you're seeing the two barracks timing and push out, this is around the movement time. And so the fact that that pressure is not coming might leave him a bit of confusion. Let's see if, I would have liked to see Nyokin actually move out to the natural, uh, and just clear this in the meantime to maybe give Striker a little bit more pause for thought. Control tower being dropped, second barracks being added on, and the Mutalisks so we got five mules already out in flight. We'll see if this is going to be sufficient. So we've got some Marines with a little bit of medic support, but the turret's not quite there yet. And Stryker might have an opportunity, actually. Diving in, wanted to pick out that medic. Now recognizing, okay, hey, your turrets aren't ready yet. So one turret, just not quite complete. The second one finishes just in the nick of time. And that could have been a lot more disastrous. That could have been a huge disaster right there. First... Valkyrie about halfway complete, which again, I think this is a wise play. Let's see if Stryker moves in and scouts it. A medic getting picked off. That was huge. And the two barracks continuing to whirl. This is going, so hopefully with this, this means there's less turrets that are going to be required to defend against Stryker's very, very strong mutilus play. Okay, yeah, now spotted that. Going to go ahead and retreat. One problem with this play, though, is that still leaves you in a defensive slot. Versus a Zerg that can drone up and do things along those lines. It looks like we do have Lurker Tech being researched at the Natural Expansion. Comps adding the main to see if... And the Natural Expansion, I think, spotted that. I'm not sure if this third has been scouted as of yet. A third gas being tacked down from Stryker to make his way towards the standard hive timing. So now, okay, Nyokan survived the Mutalisks. Is he going to have the follow-up where he can move those... Valkyries out on the field and be abusive at this stage. That's kind of the when I've seen this builder, that's been the kind of the secondary question. The magic number tends to be three uh, three Valkyries where you can really start pushing the troops around. I've seen some players do some fantastic hidden micro with Scourge as well. The Medic Marine army starting to field out only two Valkyries. It looks like the third one no, no third one being constructed. So he's going to try to do it with just the two. And see if he can make it happen there. Three barracks are up. The uh, factory and machine shop being dropped to potentially go for a bust. Filtering towards the top right to make something happen there. We've got two lurkers. The other, the other issue with this Valkyrie build is because so much gas gets dedicated to Valkyries that does end up delaying forms of detection, specifically science vessels. So Nyokun's going to have two commsats to detect the lurker positioning and try to barrel up that ramp and make it happen. He's not going to have any defense matrix. Position back to the middle, looking for a forward scout. The Valkyries are separated from that Medic Marine Ball, and that Medic Marine Ball actually pretty well spread out. Stimming forward is going to find some Lurkers before they're able to get to that bridge line, holding this mid-map area. Very important at this stage. And it looks like now a science vessel being added on. Still only three barracks, and it looks like a siege tank to make something else happen. The eight mutalisks making their way towards the natural expansion. The Valkyrie's going to go ahead and break off to potentially defend that. And this is kind of the problem, is now Nyokin's back at his main. He's got the siege tank out, but he's got a long, very long distance and a very tr uh, treacherous trail to try to walk a lot of this army up to make something happen with what he's got. Never mind, he's gonna, this is an interesting play. Rather than try to deal with Striker out on the field, it looks like he wants to just try to play a little bit of economic aggression and grab his third and maybe hold the middle and box in Striker from there. Maybe just concede. So get three bases up a little bit more rapidly right there with a few missteps, a whole lot of Marines getting obliterated. That's sufficient that even with detection, these Lurkers going to be able to walk forward and wipe out the rest of this. With that, Nyokin losing a lot of map control. Hmm, that's unfortunate. 
Ugh. See if you can regroup. But. Naokin going for the long game. I'm not sure I like this play though. As soon as Defilers. The thing is, is as soon as Defilers end up in play, it's that. It's basically taking this bridge. That siege tank is going to be very important at this position. It's basically just take this bridge with one swarm and then it's very just a little bit of a hip uh, jump very close to go ahead and <laughs> I didn't say that phrase properly very rapid to get into that natural expansion additional hatchery going down to the upper right we have a nidus canal four lurkers in place evolution chamber second evolution chamber being dropped to maintain some decent upgrades that's actually another aspect of this is the gas goes everywhere else and so it actually ends up not in the marines pocket and that's actually going to hurt Nyokin down the line because once that plus one carapace is in play especially with adrenal upgraded zerglings they get very very dangerous 42 workers on striker's side Nyokin has managed to re-secure his side of the bridge he's got that command center up but not yet mining at the four o'clock location is making a mech switch now so rather than worrying about marine weapon upgrades Wants to play the long game to mech now that he's secured that third base. He does need to get that third base up and operational, and he needs to keep this army alive mid-map. Lurker's pushing in. Swarm dropped as well. Two Marines die, but the rest backing up. This is a very precarious moment. Nyok needs to hold this while he's transitioning. Lurker's pressing. It looks like they are going to be able to get a siege tank. The additional siege tank splitting. A mine being dropped. Few mines being dropped to try to buy some time. It looks like Marine's going to swing across the 9 o'clock to try to be annoying. Yeah, they're moving everywhere on the map again just to try to buy that time to get mech out. And doing a good job being annoying against some of these troops. Not forcing a Dark Swarm right there, but able to get a lot of other damage done. They might be able to take out this hatchery at the 9 o'clock. Pushing in, Defiler gets picked off. Marines and medics retreating to the top left-hand corner. The Lurker's trying to pin them in. Taking some damage. The Mutalist getting cleaned up otherwise, so that's... On Nyokin part, he doesn't have to worry about the Mutalists to follow things up, but did he buy himself enough time? Barracks now moving out to scout. We have some vultures and siege tanks, now with plus one, cleaning up the Zerglings. This is going to be the reveal to Striker that, hey, that was a mech transition. Starting to press down with additional Zerglings. Lurker is already being constructed, but if Nyokin can get sufficient siege tanks out, or I should say Ultra is already constructed, few of them on the way, but if sufficient siege tanks are there, they're really going to get punished on these bridge lines. Yeah, additional base humming, and Nyokin already moving up. He wants to grab this upper location. The last few marines getting wiped out. The vultures starting to sneak across. They're not quite speed upgraded yet. Not that they need to be. A single zergling finding some territory. I think that was an SCV battle kill. Maybe not. In the bottom right. So Nyokin going for... He's actually way ahead in supply. He's got some good mech play. It looks like Carapace upgrade is there for the Ultralisk, but the mines can soften up, the siege tanks can soften it up. I actually like that transition from Nyok, and this is kind of good play overall. So we got a healthy factory count behind this. He needs to keep the weapons upgrades rolling, though, in particular. Some mines up along that right-hand side. Zerglings, tr and this is the battle from here, is a striker trying to do some mine clearage to allow additional troops to make their way across. Additional hatcheries being planted top right. It's turned into a macro war overall. Ultralis engaging. But I think there's plenty of mines to maybe deal with this. So the Ultra, yeah, taking the mine hit and wiped out. The Lurker is able to press in, get some nice Dark Swarm, however. And there needs to be an answer to the Dark Swarm as well. It's kind of the big weakness of mech play. You really want to make sure that the, the Filers never get in position or there's mines planted. Double irradiate. Third irradiate dropped. Tanks can do... The splash does damage underneath the cloud. But it... Only the splash. So the main damage doesn't hit. It's just... And it has to... The splash has to land, I believe. Is also the way it works. Ultralisks again getting soft up, softened up from mines, but at least getting some purchase 
at this three o'clock. Nyokin has split off some vultures in the meantime to deny the nine o'clock potentially to Striker, but he's gonna have to draw these troops back because he's losing the three and Mech is very expensive. He needs to keep these bases up and running. With these exchanges, Striker has moved ahead in the supply count, which usually means that you're ahead, although it can get a little bit fuzzy when it's coming to Mech. More lurkers and defilers making their way along the left-hand side. Ultralisk looks like it's finally going to get expended at the 3 o'clock. Looks like this is mostly to be defensive for Striker. He's going to turn this into more a defensive macro game. Zerglings pushing their way across mid-map. We do have Ventral Sacks being upgraded to allow transporting. I love that response to mech actually to do Zergling bombs or even Ultralisk bombs on top of the siege tanks. Also does some protection against Irradiate of uh, some troops potentially also opens up some of that movement and mech can be very very slow as far as the main army movements plague landing on the vultures so still using some that's gonna make them very very weak and potentially equal so it now you can gonna have to micro them very very well science vessel takes one hit from the scourge but not a lot else that three o'clock base still getting denied the 9 o'clock spotted, but not a lot of other action. And Striker expending some troops just to check out what the situation is over ramp side. So we've got a pocket of vultures that are across midfield, but a growing ultralist count. And honestly, an ultra drop at the natural expansion, at the main, on top of some siege tanks. That's the ultra count getting a little bit too high for Striker. And I don't know that Nyokin's going to have sufficient territory to deal with another science vessel getting picked off. I don't think Nyokin has the mix of troops to do it. And Striker doing a good job recognizing that there was a lack of Goliaths out in the field. And so able to get some damage done. We got the Overlords grouping up for the Doom Drop at the 3 o'clock location. Do Ultras still take Irradiate damage when they're in the Overlord? I wonder. Yeah, they die. that one died. So now the answer. That's the answer. Some Zerglings also grouped in. We don't have a lot of Overlords to help with this. One of the Overlords getting Irradiated. But it doesn't mind getting irradiated as long as it opens up the drops and mine drags into the rest of the siege tanks. Is this going to be sufficient for Nyokin to retake the 3 o'clock? Still trying to press in. We've got another drop moving in, however, of a few Ultras and Zerglings going all the way to the main and going to drop right on top of that factory line. A few dropping down below as well. So, good amount of Ultras made it all the way into the main. These Zerglings with the Adrenal upgrades chew through these buildings extremely rapidly so chaos everywhere three o'clock base also getting engaged and now Nyokin, before where it seemed like he was clinging on right now looks like it's falling apart for him having trouble evicting troops out here also losing territory yeah gonna gg right there well played from striker he will continue in the lower bracket i believe the games between striker and artosis made it to the mainstream Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.